Today let's talk about props, more specifically how to make your character pick up something and interact with it. But with cutout animation, this can be a little bit difficult, especially if the prop is resting and then the character goes and grabs it. There's a few things we need to do to set up our rigs so that everything works together. You can download the props I'm going to be using in this scene and follow along. But let's jump into Toon Boom and get started. So this is a pretty common setup you might get if you were working in a studio. So you'll have the character here, you'll have a separated prop, sometimes you might even have a peg that connects the two so you can scale them or move them together. We set up our scene, I moved all my keyframes to the end, and I grabbed the poses that I need and moved them to the beginning. Sword is on screen right, so he's gonna reach to screen right, grab the sword, and pick it up. So when we're working with props or when characters are interacting with props, it's always a good idea to have them connected to the character. This way, when the character moves, the prop is going to move automatically. So if we keep them separated, we're going to have to counter animate the sword to the player's motion, and it's going to get very complicated very quickly. But the big problem is, there are times when I want the character to move and the sword to stay still. I can't just connect this sword to this character. I'm going to need to duplicate it. Let's grab the sword, go up here, nodes, duplicate selected nodes. Now we have two swords in the scene. Cut this, go to my hand, paste it here, and let's connect the sword to the hand. It's usually a good idea to add a new peg that controls the hand and the prop separately. And we can give it the same pivot point as the hand so it's easier to control as well. Connect my sword to the hand prop and then I'll plug it in between my hand. Now, we can move the sword individually, or we can move it with the hand. And that's exactly what we want. Our scene looks kind of funny because we have two swords in it. We're going to fix that when we go and keyframe our main poses. So let's scrub through. We have our anticipation as he goes to grab. We have an overshoot as he actually grabs the sword. And then he comes back and settles. But you might be wondering, why did I mark these frames in red and purple? Let's have a closer look. If we select our stationary sword, during the red frames, it's drawing substitution 3. And then as we go right to our purple frame, we're in a blank drawing substitution, so the sword disappears. Well then what sword is that, you say? That is our other sword that we connected to our player's hand earlier. Wow. So we kind of have to be like magicians here. We have to make that transition so quick that the audience has no idea. So we really have to pay attention when we add our tweens. Okay, so I don't really care about this to this, I'm not gonna tween that, but I will tween this part when he grabs the sword. So let's put a basic tween on everything, and then we can figure out where we want to add our eases. If we play through this, it looks okay, but we can kind of disguise this switch a little better. I don't want any real ease from here to here, but I do want to ease out of this pose. So we'll do 35. And I'm not going to ease into this overshoot pose because I want that to be very quick. But I am going to ease out of it. 30. I'll ease into the next pose. I'll ease out of the next pose. And then we'll ease on the settle. Now when we play, Right, that is a lot quicker right at our switch. So here to here, the transition is almost seamless. And if we want to take this a step further, we can convert this animation to twos, and I think it'll look even better. So everything's on twos, and if we look at our transition point from here to here, there's an even bigger gap, so it's even harder to tell where the switch happens. thing that really sells is that it moves very quick on the transition and then it, there's a lot of ease after the transition so the viewer focuses more on what happens after than the actual transition point so it's super important to know how to make characters interact with props because you're going to be doing it a lot on a show now most of the time it's not going to be something as cool as a sword it's mostly going to be things like a fork a cup uh, a book people are holding a clipboard or a pencil, but the principles are exactly the same. With props, working smarter is best. If you find yourself 
manipulating the prop individually for each frame, you're probably doing something wrong. That's all the time we have for today, guys. Let me know any questions you have in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see everyone in the next video.